Hi, I'm John Trischler from Specialty Performance Parts, and today we're going to do an install of a triple fog light kit in a 2021 plus Ford Bronco. So here at SPV Parts, we have developed a new uh, triple mount fog bracket for the modular bumper for your 2021 plus Ford Bronco. And we feel that this is going to give you the most versatile, uh, strong, clean, unique mounting option for lights in the Ford Bronco to date. And we've done that in several ways by giving you three vertical slots that are lined up precisely in the right locations, and this is key. So you can utilize these three strategically placed slots for either three rigid D-series, Radiance, Radiance Scene, uh, Baja Designs, uh, Squadron Lights, uh, you can also do S2s, you can do diode dynamics, though the diode dynamics case is a little larger. Um, so we would recommend probably one pair of the, the standard size diode dynamics and then two pairs of the smaller if you're going to go that route. But today we're going to install uh, rigid radiance lights. And I think you're going to be pretty excited to see how this looks. We're also excited to show you our new headlight slash parking light adapter that plugs into your factory headlight and accesses that parking light circuit for amber backlights for lights such as these rigid radiance or radiant scene lights. Um, also the 360 series light. So if you have the A pillars up there, we've got some, some new brackets for those as well. So if you wanted to put the rigid 360s up there and access those amber backlights up there as well, this new marker adapter is gonna help you with that. So we're gonna show you how that works as well on that install. All right, but we're going to go ahead and sit this bracket down because uh, much like a cooking show you've probably seen um, where they prep all the food and it's all raw and then they stick it in the oven and then they pull a completed set out of the other oven. Uh, anyway, we've got that here too uh, to just save some time with this install. So here we have uh, installed here on our bracket, we have our radiance scene here on the outside, which are the 3000 lumen lights and then this, the regular radiance version here in the middle. The regular radiance is about 900 lumens. Uh, so for, for more normal driving, most people prefer those standard radiance, which we have in the middle. When you have that one pair on, then the radiance scenes could still have their amber backlight on. So it's kind of, I think, going to create a cool effect if you install them this way, if you do go that route. Of course, you can go all three radiance scenes or all three standard radiance in this case. Um, but I thought this would be a cool one to play around with uh, for that aspect. And uh, when we get these all hooked up and we connect them to our marker adapter from our headlight, then they should sequence in with that circuit, which is going to be really cool. So again, to save time, we've pre-installed these. Now, these also have, if you'll notice, these black brackets here. These are the optional uh, flip mounts that we have. They're a longer mount and they install from the bottom, come out the top. The standard brackets that come with these lights are going to put the words rigid upside down. But uh, for the Bronco section, whether you do go this route or not, I don't think you're going to see too much of it. As you can see, the, the top part of the frame is hidden just a little bit here. Um, the light is not blocked at all, just the top part of the frame. So you don't see the words rigid there anyway. Uh, if it's upside down, you may see just a little bit of the bottom here. You'll see that when we get them installed. But basically, I want to cover real quick how you install these lights on the bracket. I want you to notice that the corners of these lights right here come right up to the edge of this lip. So you see this lip. This is up, all right? So underneath of the front part of the bumper here, this is going to sit in and it's going to go up behind the bumper and then back. So your lights are going to come up to that edge at that angle. And the reason that that's important to note is because this is essentially the opening to your bumper hole here, the pocket. All right. So you want to bring those as far forward as you possibly can. So it's real easy to just kind of notate, Hey, here's where I need to go. I can't go any further and then you stop. So from there, it's just a matter of getting them straight, right? And we want to um, stress that it's really easy to pre-install these like this. And then all you have to do is put these three bolts in, 
that are already in your bumper and then you just connect them. It's very, very simple. So you'll notice here on the top side, on the top side, you have your three bolts and your washers. Now I'm gonna get up close here to the camera so you can see this. And hopefully I'm at the right angle. But do you see this slot here in the top of that light? So on the back of these lights, you've got these fins. So you can see that. The fins kind of carry over here on the top of the light. The very, very center slot in that fin is lined up perfectly with the slot here. That's straight. That's the straight angle. So it's really simple. If you get your lights up to the front, we're getting a little blurry there, sorry. If you get your lights here up to the front, all right, and then you can just pivot them to get them straight and line them up with these slots because these slots are they're angled on the bracket, but they're straight with the vehicle. When this is installed on the vehicle, those slots are going straight forward. So that means your lights are going to be going straight forward. So it's very, very simple to install that. Again, if you put your bolts on there, leave them somewhat loose until you get them up, butted up here to the front. Line that center slot up here on the rigid lights it is very, very simple to do. And then you just tighten your bolts down and you're good to go. Now, I'm going to talk to you real quick about the hardware that's included with this real quick. All right. So you're going to get 14 of these extra thick stainless steel washers. And I'm going to tell you what to do with those. The reason you have 14 is on one side, you're going to use three, just like this. And you're going to put them underneath of the factory hardware that you see here. So in this case, with a rigid light, you have a standard carriage bolt here. You have a washer and then you have a lock washer and then a standard nut. All right. So those screw down. The extra thick washers just give an additional stability here to hold everything in place on this bracket. Again, if you use the hardware we provide to you, you use these washers and use all the washers, your lights will never fall out because the little thin washer that's provided with the lights bent or whatever. Again, use the hardware. That's why we give it to you. So don't just discard it because you don't think you need it. So that extra thick washer that you see there is going to have extra stability when clamping that light in place. All right. So there's three here on this side. All right. You're going to have three on the other side. That's a total of six. Then you have another eight washers left. All right. So that is four for each side. All right. So I've got four left right here. And so now I want to explain what these are for. If you stack two of these together, they're about a quarter of an inch. Now, what you'll want to do with those, sometimes, not all the time, if you did get a light that is not a full-size pod like this, and let's say that you selected lights that were um, like the Baja Designs S2 lights or the Diode Dynamics SSC2 lights that are the, the half-size lights, where they mount on their bracket is just a little bit different on where it's going to line up here to the top. And even so, they're also shorter. So to get those proportionately balanced in this fog pocket so that they look right, so they look clean, and you want them to look like they came that way, right? That's the whole point. That's what we want too. We want to make them look like they came that way. So what you're going to do is you're going to take two of these and you're going to stack them underneath this bracket on the bottom side between the bottom of the fog bracket and the top of the bracket that came with your lights. That's going to move that light down a quarter of an inch. And we've tested this with the S2 lights from Baja Designs and the SSC2 lights from Diode Dynamics. And they look perfect in the bumper pocket when you do that. So three of them on each side, use them every time, 100% of the time, right here on the top. It adds that stability. These lights are not gonna budge. They're not gonna move. They're not gonna have play because they're in there solid with those thick, heavy duty stainless steel washers that we provide. And if you have the smaller lights as well for your outside corners, you use these spacers, that's going to put them in the right position so they look fantastic as well. Now, that's also going to bring them down just a little bit 
so you won't necessarily be hitting the front edge of this. So with those smaller ones, you can bring those forward just a little bit more. If you want to bring those out that pocket just a little bit, you can. But that's our prep work. So hopefully you understand how these install. Again, very simple process. Once you get your lights on your bracket like this, you're ready to install them. So let's go ahead and get started with that. And to do that, we're gonna remove these three bolts that are just underneath of the front edge of this bumper that are a star type bolt. And from there, again, we just put them through here. But just before we do that, I wanna show you something real quick on our harness. And then of course, we're gonna get into the wiring as well and how to install those. Um, but this is our plug and play triple fog light harness. If you get um, lights such as the Rigid Radiance, the Radiant Scene, um, or other lights that don't have connectors on them, then you're gonna use the connectors that we include in our little connector pack here. And you can put those on the end of your lights. And I'm gonna show you that real quick. We've already done so here on these lights. So the included pins, and there's instructions on how to do this as well. Um, but we'll show you a little bit here when we put our switch connectors on our switch wires. But uh, but anyway, you're gonna install these connectors with the included pins onto your lights, real nice and clean. And then when you do that, they're gonna plug right into our harness. So it's nice and clean. If you have Radiance, Radiance Scene lights that don't have a harness with them, like this. Um, so in other words, Rigid didn't provide a generic harness. Then you're gonna get our harness because it's not a kit if you can't install it, right? And so you need a harness to install it, so we're gonna provide this to you. For the other lights, such as uh, Baja Designs, Diode Dynamics, um, or even Rigid D-Series Pros that may have the generic harnesses with them, we don't provide this because you have a factory harness. Now, that also means that, relatively speaking, the overall price is cheaper because we didn't package this into the light kit. So, it's not like you're getting this harness for free. You are getting it at a, at a, at a discount with, this, with the Radiance lights because they don't have a harness. You need one. If you want to upgrade the harness for uh, one of those other lights and you didn't get this triple harness with it uh, because they had a, a harness with them, you can pick these up. And with that, we're going to include an adapter style that's going to plug directly into your light. So this triple harness will match to any light and if you ever decide to, to change lights or you change your mind and you switched out lights and so on, uh, you can simply switch adapters at the end and plug them right in. You'll never have to buy another harness. This harness system is extremely unique um, and it, it allows you to connect to any vehicle, any light, plug and play and so on. Um, once you've installed your connectors on your switch wires, which we're gonna show you how to do, these just plug in as well. It's a really cool setup. So, We'll go ahead and start by kind of laying our harness out, very simple to do, and then we can install our lights as well. First, I want you to pay close attention because there are two different style pins that come with the kits in the harnesses. All right, so you've got one pin, and we're gonna to touch on this later on, that's got a hole in the middle, it's a tube. That is the pin that goes with these single connectors. These go on your switch wires. You wanna put those aside because you don't wanna put the wrong pins in these connectors here or they won't plug in correctly to your harness because you need the matching connectors. And there's, there's a couple different style crimpers that you can get. This one's all in one, so we'll just use this for quickness here. So we just slide the pin into the crimper just like this and it's prepped and ready to go you're gonna slide one of these rubber connectors onto the wire. Um, you wanna stop where the insulation stops. This bare wire that you see here, you wanna get that inside the pin here, right here. You see these wings right here? All right, it's very important. That wire is gonna be what you wanna have in there to crimp those over. The large wings right here those crimp over top of that rubber seal. So we're gonna do that real quick. And so this is what all three should look like. Just like that. Now all we have to do is slide on our connector. 
you're going to make sure that you have the wires lined up in the right position. All right, the easiest way to do that is to take your harness that you've already got, all right, that already has those red, white, and black wires popping out of it here. Line up that, that connector so that it's, it's the same direction as you would plug it into, all right? On the end of the connector here, it's got letters, A, B, and C. On the end of your harness, you've got the same letters, A, B, and C. If you want to remember this, A is black, B is red, and C is white. All right. Pins are lined up. You just slide these in. They'll go click. Once they're all in place, you can push this clip down. Make sure the wires are out of the way for the little dividers in the middle. And that's it. We're done. Our connector's on there. Once we have our light installed, we can just plug in our connector, just like so, and it's ready to install on the truck. In several cases, your lights already are going to have connectors on them. And the connectors may not match up to these connectors, and that's all right, because we actually provide the proper adapters, as you can see, that are going to just plug into these universal harnesses, and then you can connect any light. Now, the beauty of it is that if you ever decided to change lights down the road, and you wanted to go with a different style, you know, one that had a backlight versus the original one you put in there didn't, the harnesses that you've already installed are already prepped and ready to go. So all you have to do is just switch out the adapter that you have on there and you can plug that in. But for the Baja Designs lights, you just need this two pin adapter. So we just take our adapter, plug it into our harness, just like so. It clicks in place. And now when we grab our Baja Designs light, here we go, just like this, you'll notice that it has a two way weather pack connector on it. That's going to just plug right into our harness and our adapter, just like so. So in this case, you don't have to put a connector on it. You can see it's already on there. Now let's say that you have a rigid D-series light. So the D-series lights are going to use these two-way DT connectors. So we plug in the adapter for the two-way DT connector, just like so, until it clicks. And then here's our D-series light. You'll notice it has the two-way connector for that and then that plugs in just like that. So now again, our harness is prepped and ready for this light. So no matter which light you have, you're either gonna get connectors with your harnesses or you're going to get an adapter that plugs into those lights so that uh, basically all you have to do is plug and play. It's as plug and play as you can possibly get with the exception of the fact that there are certain lights that, that the factory just doesn't put connectors on but we solve that by giving you connectors. And the only other place that you have to make any type of connections that are not plug and play are on the switch wires themselves, which we give you connectors so you don't have to have a permanent connection again on those. That gives you the ability to unplug a harness and move it to a different switch, combine harnesses and so on, by simply prepping those switch wires with our connectors that we provide with the harnesses up front. Now on the Bronco, the factory switch wires are on the driver's side. So we're gonna wanna take our long side here with our, our three prong connectors. We're gonna put that on the passenger side, all right? Just like this. I'm just gonna kinda lay it here so you can kinda see. All right, and then you're gonna take your other side over here, and then you're gonna have a short end. Hopefully you can still see this here in the camera. That is gonna go to your driver side lights. There's our three three prong connectors. And then this last end, we're going to bring this up behind the bumper here into the engine bay and run that alongside the battery and the fender well and take it back to the firewall. On this end, you'll notice you have a ring adapter here. And this is for your ground. In some cases, you might have both a connector style like this and the ring for the ground. If you do, most of our newest harnesses have those. Um, you're just gonna use one or the other. In most cases, you're just gonna use the ground ring. 
The reason for the connector here for the ground, just a second way to ground it, is because we have some other adapters, such as uh, plug and play relay adapters. If you don't have enough power on the circuit that you're connected to, you can plug those adapters in here, connect them to the battery, and gain power from the battery that way, rather than um, just connecting it to the firewall because it grounds it through that relay. But in most cases, again, and in this case, you're gonna use this ground ring. So that's why there would be two. At the switch wire end, and at both of these other ends, you're gonna have your three sets of wires. They're labeled pair one, pair two, pair three, so you can tell which ones you're hooking up to what. And so um, with that, once you, can, you wanna make sure you, you connect you know, whichever position your light is on this side or that side, you connect pair one to the same position, pair two to the same position, pair three to the same position, and so on. And if you remember that when you get up to the top, especially if you're going to connect each of the three to a separate switch, then you'll know which pair is which. If you're gonna combine them with one of our three-way splitters, then that won't really matter too much because you're gonna plug them all together and so on. But we'll go ahead and run our harness now. All right, so here we are. Here's again our driver's side pocket. We can look through here. You can see daylight here on the other side. You can use a coat hanger or something to pull it across, um, just depending on. Uh, we could go across there too. Let's see if we can get a light in there. There you can see, you can go across. You just, again, like I was saying, you want to keep it clear of those heater hoses and things. You could get it up here in front of that as well. Try to get it across there. But anyway, you just need to get that long end across. And so you'll have access there. And then the other end we can take and bring up here. Um, there's plenty of places we could bring it up. We could bring it up behind this wheel well liner. Um, we could take it up here by this front corner here underneath of the headlights. Um, we'll figure that out here in just a minute. All right, so let's take a look here. So we've got our wire here now brought over on the driver's side from the passenger side. Here's our split where our connectors are for our other lights. Now we're trying to get this up into the engine bay. And I want you to pay close attention to this. You see this right here? I believe this is gonna be kind of a bump stop for this, this wheel here. So you don't wanna put the wire on this side just in case that wheel ever would rub it. You wanna keep it here to the front. Get my hands out of the way. I'm gonna keep it here to the front of this. So we'll pull it back. But I was able to push this up into this pocket right here. Get some more light there. Right here behind that wheel liner, all right? Hopefully you can see that. And now we're gonna move up here to the top and you should be able to see down inside here Focus, there's our cable, you see it? There in the bottom, just below that wheel liner. So now we can see that, so we can just pull that up and then we're gonna try to route that here behind this frame, underneath, behind this frame, and then we should be able to just kind of take it alongside this wall, maybe even behind the back of the fender flare area, and then to our switch wires over there. And to remove this liner, this wheel lip molding, you just take these and you twist them this direction, all of them along the inside here, and then that can be removed. All right, so to lower this inner wheel liner down if you wanted to run your wires behind it there. You see these little plastic screw type push pins there. There's several of them here, there, there, and so on. 
and then up on the back side here so you can see there's there are a couple of, of bolts that go to a sheet metal screw those are seven millimeter you don't have to take them all down you just take kind of like the front half of this you can get enough to drop that down some all right so now that we've removed our flare which is real simple to do and we've removed our or at least detached our fender liner here you can see there is our harness right there um, so this is just an easy way to kind of get that routed up behind this fender if you want to go that route and hide that wire if for some reason you don't want to be that clean then you can run it like under the battery and and so on into the engine bay uh, in, inside uh, but you just want to make sure that you do not have it touching anything hot um, but if you want to get a little cleaner it's really easy to detach this wheel liner and run the cable through this wheel well here i was able to fish it right through underneath there where if we look on the top side, it actually pops out right here. Let's see if we can get a better light on it here. It pops out right here, right behind this junction box, and right here by our switch wires, which is right where we want it to be. And so now we've got a ground right here or here that we can put our ground on and then we'll have our connections right here to connect to our switch wires. So for now it's just a matter of just zip tying this harness up securely and out of the way so that it doesn't flop around, doesn't vibrate on anything, um, doesn't hit anything hot. We just need to get it tied down and secure. Um, but we've got it run right where we want it and that's a pretty easy way to do it. You should be able to see our harness is pulled across from the other side here. And then we have secured it with a zip tie and we've attached it to the post that attaches to the skid plate right there with a zip tie. And so we did the same thing on the other side and then on this side we pulled it tight so that there's no play. That We don't want that flopping around. So we've got it tight on one end, we pull it over here, we zip tie it to that post on that skid plate and and then that secures it. And then we route it the rest of the way up and behind that wheel liner. And again, these are just some examples of how you can do it. Again, if you wanna take the front bumper off and run it behind there, you can. Um, you can you can spend more time with it. The main thing is you just want to make sure that the harness is tight, it's secure, it's zip tied down, and it doesn't touch anything hot or anything that is going to move or hit it or rub it, for example, like the wheel or the tire and so on. All right, so you'll notice our three bolts here. These are the ones we're gonna remove to install our bracket. And it's just that simple. Um, once we remove those, we can put those through our three holes in the front of our bracket, tighten it up, and we're good to go as far as that goes. And again, we're just gonna take these three star bolts down Don't ever over torque anything, by the way. So if you do have a torque gun, be careful not to over torque it. All right, so now we have this. Again, our lights should already be lined up because we kind of followed those procedures here in doing so up front. So you shouldn't have to do anything once you put them in there. Now you can. You can go in there with a 13 millimeter inch and you can change these around if you want, uh, but you don't have to. So it's easiest to come from the back side and kind of work these up at an angle. And then you should have enough room to get past that lip. Try not to beat your lights up too much. And then you bring this out the front here just like so. And now it's just a matter of finding the holes here that line up to your bracket. So we're gonna try to do that right here. 
and just get them started a little bit. We, we left a little bit of play in there so that you don't have to put anything in there cross-threaded or anything. There's enough, not a lot of play, but enough play that even if there's some variances from Ford, you should be fine. And then you can try to make sure that that's pushed all the way forward because like I said, you do have a little bit of play and get that even. And now we can go ahead and tighten those bolts up. And it's just that easy. Can you believe that? It's just that easy. All right, now we've got our three connections here. And then all we have to do is plug those into our harness that we've already pre-run. And then we want to zip tie the rest of this cable up so that it's not loose. Anytime that you, you secure excess wire, um, so you don't create a magnetic field, you don't roll it in a, in a ball like this, you go and fold it one side and then the other side and you zip tie it like that. Now there's not that much excess um, that you wouldn't have to fold it maybe more than once. Um, but in other cases, if you ever have a bunch of excess wire and you don't cut it off for some odd reason, um, don't, uh, don't ever roll it because you can create a magnetic field uh, with the electricity that flows through there. So we'll put the other side in, we'll plug these in, we'll zip tie it, and then we can go back up to the top and plug our connections in, and we should have a completed installation. All right, so now we have both sides installed, and so we're just gonna plug in our connections and we should be good to go. So before installing any lights into our Bronco, we need to first find our switch wires. And here on, you can see the driver's side. Here's the battery. Here on this back firewall here, you should be able to see those switch wires right here. There's some additional wires right down here that allow us to tap in where the wires are run in different locations in the truck, such as the windshield in the rear and in, uh, up in the front grill here and in the passenger side. Uh, floorboard. You'll notice there's some electrical tape right here that are holding our wires in place. We can simply pull up on that electrical tape You can just pull those wires right through that electrical tape like this And they'll pull out and then you'll have access to them here just like this and then we can go ahead and get access to the manual in the center screen to tell which color switch wire is which switch. All right, so now that we have this screen open, we can move up and down, we can change pages and so on, and we'll be able to get all the information that we need as far as which color is which switch and the additional colors for wires that are run in other locations. So we have access to tap into those uh, so we don't have to necessarily run so much wire depending on what it is you're hooking up. All right, so now you're gonna notice that on the Bronco here, your AUGS 1 has a 30 amp max and your AUGS 2 a 15. And now the remaining four are all 10 amps. Uh, if you've ever had one of the other uh, F-150 Raptors or the Super Duties that had the AUGS switches as well, you had been limited to uh, two 15s, two 10s, and then the other two only five amps. Um, so this is a bit of an upgrade as far as the amp rating here, something I'm sure the other Raptor owners wish uh, Ford would do for them as well. All right, so now as we scroll that page up a little bit, we can see here on this bottom section that we have our colors now for our pass-through wires for the different locations. As, as you see, um, B1, passenger compartment, B2, passenger compartment, C is the front grill, D, right-hand visor, and E, right-hand quarter panel. So that's gonna be down on the floorboard. All right, so when we wanna put our connectors here on our switch wires, it's really easy to do so. I don't like to cut all of that end cap off um, because it wastes a little bit of wire. I usually keep a little bit there um, and just strip that off with it. 
So, you know, in this case, and sometimes you can fold over the wire a little bit too, so you might even want a little bit more, um, just get you more, more grip. So I cut off some of that, left some, and now I can strip it from behind here, just like so. So, and I'm trying to keep my hands out of the way as much as I can with the camera so you can see this. Pull down on it, and I can slide this wire off. Again, this is an odd angle because I'm trying to keep out of the camera as much as possible, but you should be able to get an idea here. It'll actually go easier if you're not trying to stay out of the camera. Just like so, then you can see there's our wire. Now, in this case, I am going to go ahead and twist this together. I'm going to slide our rubber seal here over top of our wire down to where the insulation starts. And then I'm going to fold this over because I'm using a, a pretty heavy duty connector here with some big wings. So that'll clear that. Now, depending on which connector you get, most of the time these are the same, but there can, there can be some different gauge um, wings on different connectors. Then, uh, you know, you may or may not fold that over if you can't get the, the wings all the way over. In this case, we can, so I folded it over. These, these crimpers here, I like these. Uh, you can get these on Amazon. They're about 35 bucks. Uh, what I like about these is they're a one, one squeeze crimp. Um, you can get the other weather pack style uh, crimpers. If you don't have some, you can just again go to Amazon weather pack crimpers or weather pack crimp tools and you can get those. But um, again, this is nice because it's one squeeze. We can put that in here just like this. That's what you get. Anyway, that should be good enough anyway. Normally it's gonna gonna be a little cleaner just if you're not worried about trying to stay out of the way. But the main thing is we've got the, the wire crimped over. It's important that you make sure that when you crimp over the wire, these wings right here in the middle, those need to go over the wire, not the insulation. You don't push the wire up into the tube. You wanna crimp over the wire right here. Now this is a little bit long, so it's sticking out the end just a little bit. Again, not a big deal. It's going to be hidden in that connector, but you you don't want to make you want to make sure that you're crimping this these center wings over the wire. This part of the 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 wings on this the connector go over the rubber seal. That's fine. That doesn't need to touch the the wire. But as you can see you can see bare wire through the bottom there. So this whole thing is is making contact with the wire. If you don't make good contact with the wire with this pin and you slid the, the wire up into that terminal, which I've seen people do, then you're not gonna get, you, you might get intermittent power. You, you might not, your light might not work at all. Um, and you're gonna be wondering, why isn't this working? Is there something defective? It's just because you crimped it wrong. So make sure again, these wings right here in the middle, they have to crimp over the wire. They grab that, hold that in place and so on. You don't wanna use just regular crimpers either because these wings you see these wings right here those crimp over the wire and they fold down sort of like a staple does you know if you put a staple through paper you know how it curls at the end and it comes back in on the paper that's what these do if you use just a regular set of pliers and you crimp over top of those you're just you're just pushing it flat it's not going to grab that wire and hold it in place so that's why it's important that you use the right style crimpers. They're not expensive. Again, you can get a set of the generic, just you know, regular plier type crimpers like this on Amazon for about 16, 17 bucks. You can get that style that's a one, one squeeze crimp all for all three of these locations here for about 35 bucks, if that's what you wanna do. Um, but uh, the results are gonna definitely be worth it if you do it with the right tools. So now when we slide our connector over top, and we squeeze it down here and close it, now we've got a weatherproof seal, and we can go ahead and put the rest of our connectors here on in the engine bay. All right, so the last thing we need to do now is we've got our switch wires here. We showed you how to connect those, how to put the connectors and such on those. Now we just need to ground our harness right here 
Let's see here. Which uh, which location do I want to ground that? That's probably a. This one's a little more out of the way. This one's a little more out of the way. We'll use this one. I'm not going to use the driver on this one because when you're dealing with small bolts like this that you can drop into the engine bay, that's not usually a good good thing for that in case you spin it off too much. You can be careful though, but it's also a tight area here with the, the hood. But yeah, just be careful when you get to, to the top here that you don't keep going and lose the bolt. We're just going to put our ground. Well, it went. Here it is. Just going to put our ground back in here. Back behind this brake cable. Through the hole and back down through. And that's out of the way. All right. We'll tighten that down the rest of the way. All right, so one thing um, that we're gonna do with this. So we talked about this before. Our custom harnesses here now come with these connectors on the end. So we've got pair one, pair two, pair three. And down below, I connected our outermost lights to pair three, our innermost lights on each side to pair two, and our um, closest to the center, um, closest to each other lights to pair one. These are the radiance and the scene lights, so they have the amber backlight. So that's our white wire. So you also saw earlier we, we ran our parking marker adapter cable, which is this one right here. Um, we, we connected that to our quick connect on our front passenger headlight, and so we should have power for our parking lights to our backlights now. So we can plug that into our white wire. If you didn't get that optional connector, the parking marker adapter, then you can simply connect your other backlight wire to another switch. So that's the standard way. The standard way is you connect your amber backlights, they're all on one, to a switch, and turn the switch on and off for your amber. If you want it more integrated, where the lights flash and come on and off and so on and so forth with the parking lights, then you'll want that marker parking light adapter um, option. So you can add that as an accessory. Um, that plugs in here now, just like that. So now we should have power to that in that circuit. Now we got pair one, two, pair two, pair three. What I was talking about earlier was that we have the standard radiance in the center of the two lights on each side, the scene on the outside. The scene are the brighter two. You can put each pair on one, two, three switches if you want to. But with our plug and play harness system, we also have all these optional adapters and connectors that you may or may not have seen when you were checking out and, and selecting your kit. If you missed some and you want to customize it a little bit more, you can go back and pick these up. This is a two-way splitter. And so what I'm going to do now is I want to combine the two pairs of lights. So this is going to be um, the two scenes we had, so on one and three. So here is two. So I don't want to combine that one. I want to comp combine one and three, these two right here. I can plug those into this two-way connector splitter and combine them now just like so and now I can connect those both to one switch so now it's just a matter of figuring out which switch I want to connect them to again we've got our six switch wires and we went through how we labeled those and put our connectors on and so on 
Um, switch one is 30 amps, switch two is 15 amps. Either of those are gonna be fine for our fog lights, uh, regardless of whether we have the combined pair or not. The scene lights put out about two amps a piece, so four of them are eight amps. You're still well under any of the switches, including the 10 amp switches that are all the way across. But uh, for convenience, I think I wanna go ahead and put on switch one the lights that we're probably gonna use most of the time, the less bright regular radiance. So we'll plug those into switch number one, and then we'll know switch two is just all out. It's all the power, you know, it's gonna be the scene lights. Just plug that into switch two. And now we should have power to those. Now, when all is said and done, we don't want these wires dangling here. So again, like before, we want to zip tie these up and out of the way. But for right now, we're going to just kind of push them here to the side. And we're going to just check and make sure everything works. So now, let's see first off if our parking marker adapters work. So I've got my key here in the hand. I'm going to, I'm going to hit unlock on my doors. Should trigger my parking lights. And look at that. Did you see those flash on? Did you see the radiance flash on? Isn't that cool? So now when I lock the doors, unlock the doors, there's our amber. See that? It's tied into that circuit now. That's a really cool feature with that parking marker adapter. And like I was saying earlier, we're gonna work on coming out with a kit here for marker lights here for your grill, similar to the Raptor. We're not gonna put some cheap junk in there. We're gonna give you a nice looking kit that looks quality and looks like it came from the factory that way. But you'll be able to put those in the, your grill here and connect those um, to that marker adapter that we have there right in the middle. So you'll still have access to both the connections for these radiance lights if you have them, but also for that, that kit there for your grill. So I think that's going to be really cool. I'm excited about that. But uh, let's go ahead and test out the lights themselves. All right, so you should now see that we've got our headlights on and our backlit radiance lights. So now let's go ahead and turn on switch number one, which is gonna be our standard radiance pair. And again, you can get any configuration of radiance or scene lights that you want, and you can mix and match one radiance, two scene, two scene, you know, or three scene, three radiance, you name it, whatever you like. Um, this is just one configuration that we came up with that we kind of wanted to try out. And so we'll flip on switch number one. All right, so you should be able to see the amber on each side there uh, with the main light in place. And now I can go ahead and turn on the other two with one switch. We're using again switch number two, just like that. And you can see that we've got all of our light. The amber backlight is still on. We just don't see it because the main white light is out overpowering it but that amber light is still on all right so that completes our install don't forget to rate comment and subscribe visit us at spvparts.com for this kit and many more for your ford bronco raptor and other off-road trucks accessories we have performance parts superchargers roush performance packs cold air kits you name it again if you've got a new bronco raptor visit us at spvparts.com and you'll be happy you did. We've got lots of cool stuff you can't get anywhere else. So again, check us out, spvparts.com.